Hey, today I'm going to come at you with a topic called reactivations and how that is the least expensive way of filling your practice up on an immediate basis. Do you ever find yourself looking at your schedule and wishing that the next month was fully booked? And uh, it gives you that sense of confidence to know that uh, you have lots of patients to see and they love you and you're doing well. So on an immediate basis, uh, one of the best marketing things that you can do is reactivating past people who've fallen off or fallen between the cracks and have been forgotten about. Um, so I thought I would talk about reactivations today uh, to take look in depth at a few different points. I think the big question is how do people actually fall between the cracks in your practice. Your staff know that every person who comes into the practice is supposed to walk out with an appointment for their next trip to see you. So that being your stable datum that you're operating off of is every person who walks out has an appointment, which I assure you is not happening in your practice. It is so rare uh, that we ever find that. It's actually a problem in most practices of how many people walk out without another appointment. Amazing. So, staff always say, oh yeah, everybody has an appointment. And I'm not hitting on them, I'm just saying they work really hard to try and make it so in most cases, but um, it doesn't mean it happens. Well, how do people escape without an appointment? We were just coaching a practice on the weekend with 10 staff and the three receptionists were saying, sometimes if they're all busy doing things, patients will just like, come out from being treated, grab their coat and walk out without paying, without booking their next appointment. And I found that really ridiculous. And they said, yeah, it happens a lot. So the first thing is having your staff capture people before they come out. Part of that would be uh, the patient being walked to the front by the healthcare professional who was seeing them and turned over to the receptionist. I guess that would be a number one thing, not just let the patient walk out of the treatment room and uh, you know, assume that they're going to go and stop at reception. Okay, fine, that's one. Another one is that patients say they don't know what their schedule is, so how can they book their next appointment? All right, so that is a factor. I used to do it at my chiropractic practice and at my dental office that I went and saw. I would say, I don't know. And it's because I didn't have a, a phone with a calendar in it at the time where I kept all my schedule. And so I would say, you know, call me in 20 minutes. That's how long it takes me to get back to the office from here. And then they would call me or not. And sometimes they would forget and I would forget. And some months later I'd go, you know, I don't think I have an appointment for my next visit. And so I would call in or they would find out sometimes and check it out and go, hey, she doesn't have an appointment. But it would have to be kind of random that they would remember me because they weren't doing it necessarily on purpose. So that's another thing. Now, how do you handle that? Okay, it's real easy. You just say to the patient, all right, we need to schedule you for coming back in two months or six months or whatever the time frame is. Um, what works best for you, morning or afternoon? They go, I don't know. Um, I don't know where I'll be in six months or two months. And honestly, who does? Who does know exactly where they're going to be? They could be at the hospital. They could be um, with their mother who's dying. I'm sorry, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like they could be on holidays. They, there's so many things that can happen uh, between now and that appointment. So you don't know. So what are you gonna do about that? The best thing to do is say, well, here, let's assume because it's Tuesday and you came in at 1.30 today that that worked for you. So let's assume that's going to work for you again. We're gonna put you into the date that is a Tuesday at 1.30 and you find such a thing and you put them in and you say, if we need to adjust this later on, as we get closer to it, I will be checking in with you or you may think of it, you can phone in and just let me know, okay? So don't worry about it, you have an appointment. Okay, so what's the next thing? Um, I think the next one that we wanna take up is um, sometimes they come out from seeing the doctor and they haven't been told that they need to come back for another appointment 
and you have to look at their chart and see what the doctor wrote or what their next treatment is. Uh, different professions have different systems for this. Um, but like, okay, take a dental one because that's hottest in my mind right now. Um, then you say, okay, I see that your next procedure is blah, blah, blah. So that means we should schedule you back. How about an appointment in two weeks for that? Okay, if you do that, then the person, um, and, and you can say, you know, Dr. So-and-so has made a note that your next procedure is such and such. Use the doctor's name because it gives them some validity to what you're saying as um, for their next appointment. Okay, so that's another point that you can do uh, to make sure, because ideally the practitioner would come out and say, okay, I want to see Janice again and blah, blah for her next appointment because we're going to be doing blah, blah. <laughs> okay, that would be the ideal. But when that doesn't happen and the patient arrives at the desk, you have to look at the chart and figure it out. And if you don't know, ask the doctor. Another character that's been in your practice that you want to reactivate is the one who came in for a limited appointment, by which I mean they came in one time, it was an emergency of some sort, and you treated them and they paid and they left and they're not your next door neighbor dentist that you want to keep a good relationship with or next door chiropractor, veterinarian, optometrist, dentist, whatever. Okay? They they're not somebody that you're trying to steal you're trying not to steal patient from. But this person needed you for some reason. Quite a lot of patients out there are people who just go for one visit and the practice fails to turn them into a new patient of that practice. So you have to phone these folks and build a relationship with them and find out who they are and what are they, um, who are they seeing on a regular basis for their health care. And if they don't have somebody that they say is their regular doctor, um, and the, one of the ways that you could say it is like, we never sent your records of what happened today to um, to your regular doctor for blah, 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 whatever profession you are. Uh, could you give me their name? And if they can't, then you say, hey, well, maybe you want to be a new patient of our practice and let us take care of you. Like, and they're gonna have to do some handling because this person is not usually well-educated on um, keeping their health care intact and doing what they should be doing or they wouldn't just pop in for a random emergency from time to time right so you want to actually uh, turn them into someone who gets educated on the aspect of their health that you deal with and get them to become a patient of the practice for real and this is a person that definitely should be marketed to all right now if they are the patient of one of your friends and they were away on holidays the friend doctor was away on holidays you don't want to steal their patients you want to keep a good relationship because when you go on holidays your patients have to go somewhere so you know there's always being good manners and keeping ethics in but if the person doesn't have a regular healthcare professional for your profession that they go and see then you need to turn them into your practice patient and that's for your staff to call out and build a relationship get to know them find out what they how often they go and see um, your profession blah 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 okay so there you go there's some thoughts on places that you can reactivate and look for people that fell between the cracks and didn't have a next appointment they canceled their appointment and they never rescheduled um, you know they went on holidays suddenly and said I'll call you when I get back and they never do um, all the different ways that patients end up without an appointment. You will be shocked. Usually it's a good, almost half a practice, uh, half, a, half a patient base <laughs> don't actually have an appointment for their next procedure. And that's a, a very interesting uh, dilemma that needs to be cleaned up in a practice so that you are fully booked in the least expensive way because they've already been aware of your practice as opposed to marketing and spending a lot of money on social media and websites and all of those good things that you should do. All right, so that's it for today. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always contact us. Thanks. Bye. Don't forget to like us and to share this and uh, watch for the next one. To get your practice analyzed, contact the Art of Management at 416-466-6217.